right, let's write a definite integral to represent the area under the graph. This is important that we keep doing this integral sign and finding antiderivatives, but that you understand you're finding area underneath a curve. And so if I get my little pen here, I'm going to write my integral of my derivative function, e to the 0.5t. And I'm going from 0 to 4 dt. Okay, that's my width. So how do you find the antiderivative of e to the kt? You do 1 over that k. And you have this piece left. And we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 4. Well, 1 over 0 0.5 is 2, or 1 over 1 half. And e to the 0 0.5 times 4 minus 2 times e to the 0 0.5 times 0. So I get e 2 e to the second power minus 2 because e to the 0 is 1. And that's my final answer. All right, it says find the exact area of the region bounded by the x-axis and the graph of x cubed minus x. Well, if I'm bounded by the x-axis, I probably need to see what this graph looks like, and there it is. So what I'm looking at here is I'm wanting to find this area and that area. As you can see, this is certainly going to be negative area, so we're going to have to absolute value it. But it also gives me my interval, so from negative 1 to 0 will be this area. So let's just do it on this side, negative 1 to 0 of x cubed minus x dx. And then this side will be 0 to 1 x cubed minus x dx. And we have to remember to absolute value that. Now, so nicely, these two areas are going to be equal, but let's just work it out to make sure. So I find my antiderivative, which is x to the fourth over 4 minus x squared over 2, right? You got, the, you got, you got that. And I'm going to evaluate it from negative 1 to 0. So I have to be careful and put the 0 in. Otherwise, I'm going to lose a negative sign, and I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to plug in the 0, 0, minus, now I'm going to plug in negative 1, so over 4 minus negative 1 squared over 2. If you didn't plug the 0 in, you might lose that negative sign, and you'd know it because you'd get a negative answer. All right, and so I have that negative out front. This is just going to become 1 fourths minus 1 half, which I can change 1 half to 2 over 4. So this becomes the negative of negative 1 fourth, which is just simply 1 fourth. This other side's going to be 1 fourth as well. well. We already know that our antiderivative is this from the other side. Plug it in 0 and 1. When I plug in 1, I get 1 fourth. I'll put the squares there. And then I plug in 0, and of course this side really doesn't matter because it's all just going to become 0. And then of course this piece is going to become, it looks just like this piece right here, right? So that's going to become negative 1 fourth, but I have to remember to absolute value it. So in other words, if my dog would stop barking, in other words, these two pieces, this area is one fourth and this area is one fourth so I add the two pieces I get two fourths or an area of one half for my final answer okay moving right along here's an application it says oil is leaking out of a ruptured tank at the rate of r of t equals 70 e to the negative 0.04 t thousands of liters per minute at what rate in liters per minute is oil leaking out at t equals zero? Well, this is already a rate, so that just simply means to take and plug in zero 
So R of zero, R 70 E to the negative. This is where you have to be careful in your reading because you always just think right away you're going to do something with calculus. But this is just simply evaluating this function. I lost my pen again. This is simply evaluating this function because it already is a rate. And so I get 70, well, e to the 0 is going to be 1, so just 70. Um, what is this? Liters per minute. All right, but then next it says how many liters leak out during the first hour. So if I'm looking at during the first hour, and my time is in minutes, that says I'm going from 0 to 60, 70 e to the negative 0 0.04 t dt. And so I need to find the antiderivative, then plug in my 60 and 0. And so the antiderivative, remember that e to the kt, the antiderivative is 1 over the k and then you leave this piece alone. So I just wrote the 70 over it, and I'm going to evaluate it at 0 to 60. If you put 70 divided by negative 0 0.04 in your calculator, you actually get negative 1750. And I'm just going to put that on the outside. So my f of b is going to be e to the negative 0 0.04 times 60 minus my f of a. Please do not lose that because that is going to be a number, right? That's going to be 1 there. And I plug all this into my calculator and I get 1591.24. And this is in liters because remember we're finding an actual amount. Um, sometimes you'll just be told things like in the long run, uh, the amount of medication in somebody's body, and they don't say in how many hours. It's just in the long run, and that's what infinite limits are. So if I have something that looks like this, and it says, you know, find this area, well, what you have to do is estimate it, and notice they start with plugging in smaller values, but I just plug in a big value, and see for infinity, just plug in a very large value, and you can see that this is converging this area to 1, so again, if I drew the graph starting at 1, heading out forever and ever and ever, and I wanted to find this area, I'd just pick a very large value to plug in, and I got my answer of 1. And that's still the fundamental theorem of calculus.